the eagle in between two pyramids? Yeah, with the wheat stalks. That's the reason I found it so interesting. Those are chaffs of wheat. Oh, wow. Yeah, up both sides there. Those are they're either wheat or barley or something like that, one of the grains. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's the first time I'd ever seen that one, too, and it was right on those pages that I was referencing. I thought you'd like to see that because, uh, you know, I'm always into the iconography just like you guys are, scraping around the canyons everywhere, looking for the coolest and the newest to explain these cycles. The new normal? Uncertainty is the new normal. War, pandemics, partisan politics, and Jerome Powell. There's a consistent sense of tension, fear, and anxiety since this pandemic. The stock market's gotten crushed, our national debt soared, and inflation pummeling most Americans. Since March 2020, gold's up 30% and silver doubling. Now we have Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo all forecasting gold well above $2,000 an ounce in 2022, and even potential price targets of $3,000. Call the Patriot Gold Group today before it's too late. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA, where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver, and you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA on qualifying rollovers. Call 1-800-356-4470 for a free investor guide today. And with the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs' top-rated gold IRA dealer from 2016 to present, click on the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. You know, they, they probably already mapped everybody's actions out on how extreme they could take it or how extreme you might get. I mean, how, how 20 years on a supercomputer that... You know, what do they give us in, in the public domain here of computers, supercomputers? Yeah, okay, you got D-Wave. Okay, wow. Well, it's hard to even kind of understand that for most people. So they just brush it off like, oh, it's a super fast thing. It can do like trillions of calculations per second. Okay, well, what about trillions of posts per second based against a person's profile run out in real time of all possible trillion combinations of that coming out? and uh, another two seconds after that. And really mapping that out. And okay, that, then it gets split and thrown into the different profiles as an informational basis on what it might be. And what if that's happening every single second of every day in real time of every possible computation that's possible coming out of a human brain onto the electronic sphere as we know the internet or phone recorded conversations off your smart devices and whatnot. In real time, updated by the trillions or tens of trillions of possible outcomes per second in real time. And then that's, that's the file. And because you can't tell me that there hasn't been really incredible, intelligent, uh, you know, far advanced species that are blasting around these galaxies here. I mean, how many ancient tales of wormholes, portals, devices, stargates, uh, human visitation from the heavens itself on a physical craft? underworld, extra, external world. I mean, it, ancient history is littered with nothing but that. So, I mean, if you were going to live in ancient history, all you would be is living in a sci-fi movie, basically. It seems that this current iteration is the only time that we are not in that same visitation period of constant contact with whatever beings of intelligence or origin. We're the only time it's not been. So that's also a, uh, like an outlier if you look through history. At least these last 7,000 years. I have a theory on that. I'm glad you brought that up. So my friend Shondell, he's Navajo, and he knows a lot of the Navajo traditions. And he was telling me about a Navajo tradition where there was one time humans walked with the gods. Then they stood with the gods. Then they sat with the gods. And then they knelt. They kneeled to the gods. And he showed me some photos recently uh, that have been all, you know, over social media and, and several mainstream news sources of the commander in chief kneeling to different people. And also with the whole push of the, the kneel, you know, and, and I get how they did it because of police brutality, et cetera. But I'm, I'm wondering if there's also like a, 
you know, you've got the, the dungeon masters that are pulling strings at top levels, very high levels, master sorcerers and wizards. And they're using these platforms to create to, for their spells. And, and then when you see these pieces, you know, like, and it's, you know, it's cool. Like you could say, Hey man, he's just, he's just paying respect. Uh, and, and maybe he is, you know what I mean? I, I'm, I'm not judging, but I'm looking at it and I'm, my opinion on it is it seems as if these are subtle hints that are making it known, especially if you know about these, these prophecies and these traditions that right now humanity is at a stage where they're kneeling to the gods. They're kneeling to their authority. They're kneeling to the archons, which are the rulers. And, and that doesn't, you know, and then I look at that deeper and it, it's, it's, it's almost as, and, and, you know, don't talk too much, put your facial coverings on. If we're going and transitioning to the age of Aquarius, which is the age of freedom and the age of, of truth and the age of freedom of expression and getting, you know, getting rid of all of these old rulers where we become our own co-creators, we become our own influencers because it's the age of man. It's the, it's the age of, whoa, man, it's, it's the age of us. We're getting out of these old paradigms. And so they're, they're throwing all these spells out using all their power to not only physically impact us, but spiritually impact society as a whole. I mean, it's just, it seems like it's on a time scale. And it's the opposite with the breath of life where, you know, the deep inhalations, the deep exhalations to try to reach those realms without using any kind of psychoactive substance, but just through the breath. That's completely the opposite of, a, of covering somebody's face with a, limiting the ability to breathe. So look at the duality and just that alone of reaching uh, some higher spiritual realms or connecting with different parts of source available through those means. I mean, how many times can you cut off somebody's way to connect back to the creator, the source, the river of knowledge, the consciousness of the creator itself? I mean, it seems like every possible way is being done now. And if you could plug into the human brain and have that, and you know, that, that Archon thing, and, you know, we've had this conversation before, but I mean, are they trying to hijack humanity as a way to then reconnect back up to God itself because they've lost the ability as a fallen angel to reconnect by hijacking our physicality, by turning, going into the transhumanist, by plugging some sort of, you know, implantable tech into you to allow that consciousness to then, you know, ride through your brain, not the, the computing power itself, but the connective power back to source through meditation or, you know, through psychoactive substances of these different dimensions being reached, belief systems, feeling. You know, you think archons have feelings like we do, where you can feel love bursting out of your chest when you're so happy sometimes, and it gives you goosebumps, and you can just feel and see that. You think that's really part of their existence or would they hijack that? And I, once you hijack it, could you digitize it? But the whole thing is about getting back to source again. Like how do you hijack a human with always being connected back to God? There's always a connection there. Not even one millisecond have you ever not been connected or part of. So then how does that utilized as an, a non-connected entity to get in to be able to resonate or reconnect back with the creative source or the creator itself. See, that's the thing I don't get is, yeah, they can plug a bunch of stuff into you. They've tried this. How many times through all cultures have these archons and jinn and many different eremon and many things been referenced? It seems like it's a hijacking of humanity to try to use the physical conduct of medium back to source again. And maybe, maybe it is this time that they found a way to finally, they fine tuned it after millions of years of trying. Because I think that wall is put there on purpose. You know, these, these stories of, you know, fallen angels and being removed from heaven, I think there's basis to that, where that membrane between those two dualities of reality was put in place and, you know, to puncture through that membrane maybe has been achieved now with what they've come to in this type of tech, but then, you know, you read the old accounts of there was way, way, way higher tech 30 some thousand years ago in previous civilizations upon civilizations. Because you know what happened in the last interglacial and the ice age, they didn't sit there for 10,000 years, just twiddling their thumbs. They also rose. Who were those? We never know anything about those 
civilizations, probably all underwater. Remember in ancient Sumer, the cuneiform depictions oftentimes will show the gods with the pine cone and they're, they're, it's like they're giving it to man. They're giving it to humanity. And even there's the bird version that's giving this pine cone, which is the pineal gland. So we have this, we were given this connection with source. And then maybe what happened is some of these deities that didn't want us to have this ability are upset because we have such a connection, because we have this uh, connection with source and the abilities that at one point only they did, but then they wanted, you know, then they started to tinker in genetics and consciousness, similar to the way we are with artificial intelligence and consciousness with the artificial digital world. It's like a cycle within a cycle within a cycle. And so to me, the, you brought up the fallen angel possibility I don't know if it makes like if you read these old stories, you got to ask questions like who was it that decided this is the version? And it seems to have a very male influential role, most of these stories. And they seem to also be connected with a lot of stuff that you'll read in mystery schools. So it's like somebody a part of a mystery school that actually wrote it. So there's going to be different layers of knowledge there. And when you think about some of the reasons that the flood happened in the Old Testament, and then people had to have an answer for it. So whatever they were at at that point in their time, you know, in their life, the way that culture was and ego and mindset and the way that the world turned, maybe that was just their way of interpreting it. And then very smart people, a part of mystery schools were like, hey, let's take this and let's, let's use this for astrotheology and let's create religion and industry and take over the world and then make people go to confession and steal all their information and let's start the CIA and let's take over the meeting. Anyway, I'm sorry. What were we talking about? The seventh tablet. <laughs> no, let me read it from, I'm going to read it here, right here from the seventh tablet. I can't see right there and go. Yeah. So even when, you know, you, uh, this re relates directly to there, it says, um, the return of the Abzu, Adamu, or Adam, and Tiamit, the ro rotating planet, bear children, earthlings proliferate, proliferate, working in the mines and servants to Enlil's grandchildren, and the twins Utu and Ninana are born. Now, here's the important one that references this one. The Anunnaki couples, couples bear other offspring on Earth, but climate change causes hardships on Earth. And then it's exacerbated or increased by Lamu, Nubiru's orbiting, nearing our Earth, accompanied by upheavals. So, again, that it's, it was a change anyway already happening. So they even referenced it and said there was already massive climate changes here and massive disturbances well before anything on orbital body changes would have happened the way they're describing it here. So it comes down to, yeah, was it really a natural cataclysm because of, finger pointing and like, well, that planet's gone. Or was it already something set in motion? Very much the same like I talk about today. They already knew these cycles were here. So which one was it here? Because this is definitely in the seventh tablet talking exactly about the same thing here. But they're talking about celestial time and constellational time, which is far longer than uh, what we have. And they're the, you know, the cycles there on celestial time and uh, constellation time. So they're talking about procession of equinoxes through this thing as well. So at what point did they know that maybe there was, um, you know, a cataclysm inbound electromagnetic disturbances, that there was nothing they could control even with their tech, that it was just part of it? I don't know. But at least, you know, the seventh tablet has a lot of interesting stuff about climate changes uh, related to uh, things already happening on the earth that were then amplified by passing bodies, specifically, uh, Lamu, Nibiru's orbital nearing. So uh, that kind of delves in there. I thought I'd throw that with you because I know you're a fan, man, of, of the Lost Book of Enki. Well, actually, I am I have never read it. I, well, you wanted to read it. That's what I'm saying. You're, I have, you're, yeah. Because you know, people... you know, these stories from Sitchin and many other times, there's so many of these uh, translated cuneiform tablets out there. 
everything is a cycle. And I know you're super interested in the past like that. I should have, I should have phrased it better. No put words I'm in not. your mouth, man. Thank you, bro. I need to read it because I've been told by dozens of people I need to read it. Now, I've only read half a book by Zachariah Sitch, and that was The Twelfth Planet. And I've read hundreds of the tablets through the Oxford translated texts, as well as translations done in the late 1800s and early 1900s by various scholars. And I've read the, a lot of the Akkadian translations, as well as the older Sumerian stuff. And what's interesting is the... Um, when it talks about these gods and these goddesses and these deities, um, it, they have a human presence or like a, an anthropomorphic, you know, let's just say a human presence, but they also oftentimes seem to represent possibly the planets or the constellations. Or, and, and a lot of people have speculated Shamash or Utu. See, Utu is the new sun god, right? Before Utu, it was Shamash. And some people think Shamash and Utu are the same being. But I think that Shamash could have been Saturn when it was a much larger body and it was an actual glowing star, if it was, and I think that it was. And then Utu would be the new sun, which would be the sun that we're looking at now. The, uh, the, uh, so Inanna is oftentimes referenced with Venus, and then Venus and or Inanna and Dumazid is like Inanna, is like Venus and Mars. And I'm, I just want to know, like, how much of these older tablets are they describing actual deities? That we're here, or are they describing these planetary bodies, and they're putting it into a story form? This is really starting to like get to me a little bit. I really, really want to know. Tell the me. way I, I'm Tell taking me. a look at well, the way I'm looking at this is yeah, they're uh, the celestial bodies orbiting on Nibiru. Yeah, they have their own names already of the planets, but the deities themselves, yeah, I'm curious if they're like, you know, constellations that they're being referenced, but here, I'll, even, I'll read you another one here. This is off the ninth tablet. Um, the three of you on earth shall remain. The celestial chariots and the earth encircling the calamity shall outweigh. So again, they're already talking about cycles that were inbound anyway. This is not talking about the crossing in any way, shape or form. This is, uh, to each and the other Anunnaki choice to leave prior to the calamity, which they must have known it was already inbound as a cycle or outweigh and those who left here on the planet. And, uh, you know, and then it, said, it talks about the Anunnaki and how they decided to abandon the earth. But then it said the word of the impending calamity and Lil to them as a secret revealed. Well, if it was that, and it wasn't at the crossing of a secondary planetary body, disturbing the magnetic fields or, you know, orbital planes of the planets in our solar system, then they already knew the cycles were here, which means they had already earmarked and understood those cycles way back. So again, like we're back at that same point again, somebody understood the cycles of time at this point in juncture 7,000 plus years ago, far prior to the Mesopotamian civilization being set up because they're talking like hundreds of thousands of years of cycles. And they knew when they were all inbound. And then they were given the choice, those of the Anunnaki to stay. Are you stay, you're going to have to ride it out. You're going to have to outweigh it, which means what's the outweighting? You know, that's a, that word I just, you know, it could be deciphered in many, many ways. But the thing was, they already knew the cycle was here. Just that's like right. they know now. And this is why all the excuses are given. Because, they, you know, think about this. Are you given a chance now? If you were going to ride through this cataclysm here, uh, and, you know, polar shift, magnetic fields going out of a line for 2024, and this same is repeating again. I'm sure some of these Anunnaki would say, yeah, I want to see the big show. I'm going to stay. But others would have been like, no way. We're up in the ships. We're out of here. But it really doesn't matter because it is a known cycle that everybody through history all the way until now understands. This is it. Something changes so drastically that uh, the fate of the Earth, is that as at uh, the end of its course here for now? I mean, how many times have we seen this come and go in history? So many times we're back at it. You know, it's really shocking how the thing for me is how shocking how fast it is onset. Yeah, the vid, that was a real big disruption. But knowing the food calamity was here with just in a couple of years and how fast all these excuses, instead of working it out and trying to give people a chance to survive and come together in communities, they divided everybody. So the chance of loss of life is even greater of even more loss of life and more population decline during this time. And that's really hard to swallow because that's some pure evil right there. 
That's, that's what you're talking about. That's non-human entity, non-human consciousness of a different form telling powers what to do on this planet. But the things that are going on right now are of non-human origin in the way that they would let humanity suffer like this. That's powerful. You're, uh, it's always great talk with you, David. You bring some very fascinating information. You're super passionate. You bring a lot of statistics as well. So you can talk about the, oh, let me, let me get a shot of that um, on the video here. Look at that folks. That's cool. The Eagle in between two pyramids. Yeah. With the wheat stalks. That's the reason I found it. So interesting. Those are chaffs of wheat. Oh, wow. Yeah. Up both sides there. Those are, they're either wheat or barley or something like that. One of the grains. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's the first time I'd ever seen that one, too, and it was right on those pages that I was referencing. I thought you'd like to see that because, uh, you know, I'm always into the iconography just like you guys are, scraping around the canyons everywhere, looking for the coolest and the newest to explain these cycles. Yeah, yeah, and I hope you can come to LeCon this year. It's probably going to be in August, maybe. We haven't set a date yet, but we did set a date for the Squatterman 2022 Petroglyph Tour. That's going to be May 14th and 15th. Uh, it's going to be Saturday and Sunday in Rio Dosa, New Mexico. And um, I, I've got an interview coming up with Michael Cremo on the website in 30 minutes. And he talks about forbidden archeology. span He has artifacts that could date millions of years old. So uh, he's coming up in 30 minutes. If you have any questions you want me to ask him, David, please let me know. And if anybody's watching this podcast, they'd like me to ask him. The archaeologist, uh, I would like to know, have they found anything from the prior ice age of a civilization, the interglacial at 118,000 years prior, that 10,000 years of warmth, has anything been found from that period of time that's been hidden? I just did an interview with Mike Adams on Friday, which should be coming up here, uh, I think tonight or tomorrow, he was trying to release that, talking about something similar, but more about uh, the way digital passports are trying to be used for COVID, you're going to get your digital rationing card. So, you know, they're going to force you onto a digital system by doing it with a rationing card. You'll get your wheat, but it'll be a digital passport you'll have to sign up for, a digital ration card. So that's what Mike and I talked about there for a good hour. So uh, look for that interview. And, and if you haven't started prepping, I'm sorry, your time is almost completely out. You're going to be reliant on somebody else. I'm so anyway, I appreciate all. your time and uh, see you later. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And I wanted to show you all something before we finish this real quick. It's just going to be a quick screen share. And I want to, I want your opinion. I want to know what y'all think. Here we go. Pretty much what you're going to see in 2024, dancing yeah. through the skies right there. But uh, they'll kind of hang like up. What you're talking about, huh? Yeah, that's exactly what you're going to see, the electro petroglyphs. That's weird that you were talking about it. And this is the trailer that I just got today. You had no idea. And then... I had no idea. Wah, 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 wah. How many times was that during this program, Rex? A few. <laughs> A lot. Yeah. Well, you're awesome, dude. Um, Godspeed. Let's do this again soon. And... Keep being the change you want to see, David.